Hi, I'm Kaya. And I'm Joanna. And this is Starlet Citadel Reviews. Quantum is an abstract space conquest game from designer Eric Zimmerman and Funforge Games. In Quantum, players use their morphing ships to take over sectors of space and squeeze out their opponents. You play with two to four players and it takes 45 minutes to an hour. Players begin Quantum by choosing and building a map that's appropriate to their player count and setting out the combat dice and two decks of gambit cards and command cards. Each player takes a command sheet, seven dice, and five quantum cubes in their color. One die is placed in each player's dominance box and one in the research box, each with their one facing up, and two dice are set aside. Each player rolls the remaining three dice and may re-roll once. Starting with the player with the lowest die total, everyone places one of their quantum cubes on one of the map's starting planets, and then places their three dice in the orbital positions orthogonally adjacent to that planet. Each player's remaining cubes go on their command sheet, and the top three cards of each deck are laid face up on the table. Then the game begins. On their turn, a player can take up to three actions as well as using their ship's abilities. So they can reconfigure, deploy, move, construct, and research, and you can take the same action twice. Reconfiguring lets you transform a ship by re-rolling one of your active dice. If you roll the same number as before, you may roll again. Deploying lets you move a ship that was destroyed in combat from your scrapyard to the board by placing it in an orbital position next to a planet containing one of your cubes. The move action lets you move one of your ships up to a number of spaces equal to the number on their die. Ships can only be moved once per turn, and they cannot move diagonally, through other ships, or through a planet. Now if your ship ends its movement in another ship's space, this is considered an attack. The attacker rolls the black die and then adds their ship's value to the result. The defender does the same with the white die. The player with the lower total wins, with ties going to the attacker. If the attacker succeeds, the defender's ship is immediately re-rolled and moved to its owner's scrapyard. The attacker can either move into the defender's space or return to where they started. The attacker advances their dominance die by one, and the defender loses one dominance. If the defender wins, then the attacker returns to the space that they attacked from, and nobody loses any dominance. Now, whenever a player's dominance score reaches six, they can immediately place a quantum cube on a planet that has space and doesn't already contain one of their cubes, and their dominance die is reset to one. A player can also use two actions to construct a quantum cube. These can only be built on a planet that does not already contain any of that player's cubes and that has an empty space. The player must have ships in orbital positions around the planet with values that add up exactly to that planet's number. Ships in diagonally adjacent spaces don't count. The research action lets you advance your research die by one. Now when this die reaches six, you've achieved a research breakthrough and you can take one face up gambit or command card at the end of your turn. Your die is then reset to one. You can also take a face-up card at the end of the turn in which you placed a quantum cube, and any cards that have been removed are immediately replaced. Gambits are one-time actions that can be used immediately. The expansion gambit is the only way that you can add those two new dice to your fleet. Command cards are more permanent additions to your command sheet, and only three can be active at one time. Each ship also has a special ability that can be used once per turn. Battle stations can attack dice one space away. Flagships can carry another ship when they move. Destroyers can swap places with another ship. Frigates can change to a three or five. Interceptors can move diagonally. And scouts can be re-rolled. Using your ship's ability does not take an action. The game ends immediately when one player places their fifth quantum cube on the map. That player is the winner. 
So I really enjoyed playing Quantum. Um, the first thing that really struck me about this game is how incredibly tightly designed it is. There's no excess anything in this game. You don't have any extra components. You don't have any rules that you don't need. There's no fiddliness. There's nothing to the mechanics that doesn't contribute directly to your strategy and to reinforcing your board position, which is what this game is ultimately about. Uh, it's, it's really a joy kind of seeing mechanics, whether they're the movement rules, the orbital positions or the constraints on how you build quantum cubes that constrain you into really focused choices so it feels like every single decision that you make is propelling you forward towards your goal and is contributing something concrete to what you want to achieve. You're never sitting twiddling your thumbs, you're never kind of taking actions just for the sake of taking an action because you're waiting for other stuff to happen. This game has a really powerful sense of momentum and it's a direct result of that incredibly focused design. Uh, it makes it a real joy from an intellectual perspective as well as a, oh, hey, this is really fun to play perspective. Uh, it's wonderful in that regard. I also love how quickly it plays and how easy it is to learn, uh, which really comes from that tight design. It takes about five minutes to figure out the rules and you're gonna be done your first learning game in under an hour, which is huge, especially for a game that still does have a very good amount of depth of strategy. The one thing that I find makes Quantum a little bit less accessible than it really should be is that abstraction that's present in using dice as your ships. There's an in-story reason for this. It, it gets explained that, you know, your, your magical quantum technology can transform your ships and reconfigure them, and that's what the dice represent. So it's not like this is an issue of a theme just having been pasted on, but it is still very abstract. And for players that aren't used to games like this, they're going to come in and be like, well, dice, you know, you roll them so that they can do other things. They're not the core function or the core component of your game. And it can take a little bit of just time and experience with the game to get past that and to really understand what it's doing and not get hung up on the fact that you're moving dice around and pretending they're spaceships. So another thing that might disappoint people about Quantum is that unlike a lot of other space conquest games, this game almost feels like it might be a little too short. There's no really epic conclusion to the game, there's no big end game, there's no massive battle that you're working up to, which there is in a lot of other sort of space conquest games. This game has those type mechanics and you just keep playing them until somebody wins. And it is a really nice abstract game, but you aren't going to get that long extended epic finale that you might in another space game. So don't be disappointed. That being said, I love this game as well. I think it's fantastic. I love abstract games, especially the ones that have a little bit of theme thrown in there as well. And the theme in this game is really fantastic. The writing is smart. Uh, all of the flavor text on everything is kind of funny, kind of tongue in cheek. It's got this quantum magic element to it. It's a bit hand wavy, but it doesn't matter. They don't take themselves too seriously. So it's really nice and it's pervasive. So everything in here sort of plays into that. Also, the components are beautiful. As soon as you open the box, you're gonna see that the components are lovely. Really nice colors, very tough tiles, really nice, big, colorful, fat dice. Everything's nice, it plays in very nicely. It's kind of a joy to look at as well as a joy to play. Also, this game scales really well. So it's a two to four player game. Oftentimes when you come up against games like that, you'll have a game that's really strong in the three to four player range, and then maybe it's got like a tacked on two player version. It's not the case here at all. You're gonna have just as much fun and you're gonna feel the strategy just as much if you play it with two players as you play it with four. And that's a really fantastic addition and just makes this game even more accessible. Don't you just wanna eat the dice?